In today's video, we're going to take another crack at Watermark 3D and we're going to try and break it based on your suggestions. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So not too long ago, I made a video on watermarking your files for 3D printing, your STL files using Watermark 3D, a free online service that lets you watermark up to 10 files a day using this sort of crazy altering of the mesh that doesn't really change the geometry of an object and it can be read back using that service. And a lot of you had very, very good points as to the way I approached it and um, things that I should hit on again in another video. So I thought I'd make one. So firstly, I want to address the terms that a few people noticed with Watermark 3D. So let's just jump into terms here. So it's a free service and basically the terms are laid out quite clearly, but it does go on to say that when you upload, submit, store, send, or receive content to or through our service, you give us and those we work with, so other companies that the um, that TreatStock may work with, a worldwide license to use, host, store, reproduce, modify, transfer, create derivative works, which is the watermarking process. It's deriving, it's a derivative work from the original, and uh, such as those resulting from the rebuilt mesh or other changes we make so that your content works better with our service. Communicate and distribute such content. The rights you grant in this license are for a limited purpose of operating and improving our service and to develop new ones. So they're saying that you're giving that right purely to improve the service and operate the service and uh, develop new services. So not to sell the files or anything like that. Um, and it's saying that the license continues even if you stop using the service. So this is an important section to be aware of. If you have super top secret STL files, don't upload them anywhere. Like that should be freaking common like knowledge. But they do have to have this term in here because they are creating derivatives to create the watermarks. And if they didn't have this term, it's like a weird legal thing that might yeah, they could get sued because you modified the file without my permission. And uh, I don't know. This is covering their covering their backsides. And I'm not too worried about this. The way it's worded is quite straightforward, but keep that in mind. Don't upload things that are super top secret because you're uploading them to another party. It's just, it's how it is. Anyway, there's that out of the way. And I strongly recommend reading through these, um, this whole, whole uh, terms and conditions because sometimes it's fun to read the fine print. Anyway, let's go back to breaking our watermark. So if you remember in the previous video, we had this file. This is the lofted vase lofted vase. Did I get it right? Vase? Vase? <laughs> this is the lofted, lofted vase that I designed in my recent CAD for Newbies tutorial. And we use this to test the watermarking service. So this is the original. If I hit W in Mesh Mixer to show the original topology, this is the original file with the original triangles. So if I bring in the new version, which is this one here, and I'll just move it out of the way, transform up and across. So you can see them side by side. You will remember that it, the watermarking process inter, integrated these little uh, topology changes where the triangles have been sort of, sort of divided up and these weird little marks have occurred. And I tried manipulating the model by pulling and pushing it. But a lot of you quite rightly stated that that's not really changing the triangle count and it's not changing things too much. And it's probably why it still worked. Um, my argument against why you would want to do anything further before I proceed to do it is that uh, thieves are lazy and they're stealing stuff because they can't be bothered making it. So the chance of a thief doing anything to an STL file at all is very, very low. Um, and besides, a watermark isn't going to protect something from being stolen. A watermark is purely to prove the original owner in the case of an ownership dispute. Uh, so it's only one layer of protection and it's not perfect by any means. But I just want to be clear there, I'm not saying that um, <laughs> that watermark is going to magically stop your files from being stolen. Uh, not uploading them will stop them from not being stolen. That's basically the only way you can protect it. Anyway, so I'm going to now proceed to break this watermark. So let's delete the old vase there. And we've just got our watermarked vase here. Now remember I watermarked it with uh, Maker's Muse. So when you upload it to the, to the uh, Watermark 3D website, it says Maker's Muse. Um, and the first matter of attack was to change the triangle count, which I'm going to do now by actually creating a plain cut. So I'm just going to cut off a, period, a piece. Let's go there. So just cut off the base slightly. So we've removed some of some of the watermarking, uh, changed triangles, and we've added this remeshed area here. 
So I've saved off our file with the cut off bottom and let's see if it still works with the watermark. Let's check. Okay, so I've cut the bottom off and it's still found the watermark, which does tie into the theory that there's built in redundancy. So even though I cut some of the, the triangles away, there's still other triangles. So I'm going to go back and cut it even more to see if that finally breaks it. Let's go one extreme step and just cut it completely in half like that. So we've lost half our model to a plain cut. And if this works, then it's pretty obvious that cutting the model isn't a good way to remove a watermark. And as you can see, even though the model was cut clean in half, it still found the watermark. So doing a plain cut to try to remove the watermark isn't a good approach. So let's try something else you suggested. Some of you guys suggested changing the scaling of the model. Um, and that would be an interesting approach because I think a lot of models are designed at the scale they should be printed. But with the vase, um, changing the scaling could be interesting. So let's go to units and dimensions and change our scale. At the moment, it's uh, set at 100 millimeters high. Let's make it uh, half, half that. Let's go with 50. So it's now smaller. Uh, I don't think this will do anything to the watermark, but let's find out. And as I sort of suspected, changing the scaling of the model didn't change the triangle count or anything like that. It just changed its scale of the, of the uh, units of the model um, and it didn't change anything. We still found our watermark. So that's now really go into changing the topology of the model ourselves using remeshing, simplification or make solid tools. So Mesh Mixer has a lot of options to change those triangles, but maintain at least fairly accurately the geometry of the model. Uh, so I'm going to go select here and control A to select all the triangles. And I'm going to go to edit and remesh. Um, and I'm going to remesh our model, which will change the triangles while mostly preserving the geometry. Now, as you can see, it does degrade the geometry a, a bit, um, which is why, I mean, why would anyone who's stealing something do this? I don't know, um, but we can actually change it with just a standard subdivision by add, which adds more triangles in. So here's the standard subdivision. All this has done is taken the existing triangles and just added more. Um, this won't damage the geometry at all. And so that's, that's the method I'm going to try first to destroying the watermark. It does make the file larger though. So keep that in mind. I'm not doing any simplification. I'm just, just doing this. And so we've got lots more triangles. Let's see if this has finally destroyed our watermark. So as you can see, we've basically doubled the file size of our original marked file. The original one is about 1.7 megabytes. Um, and the new one is 3.7. Let's see if this has destroyed our watermark. I really, I'm not sure. Let's find out. Okay, I'm a bit bit shocked by this. It still worked after a subdivide. Now, it may be still looking for patterns that still exist. We only, remember we only subdivided the triangles. We didn't really change the mesh. So I will have to use, use a different remeshing algorithm, which will affect the geometry slightly. So we're going downhill a little bit. We're degrading our model to try to remove this watermark, which is already isn't a perfect solution. So we're back in the remeshing tool and I'm going to change to an adaptive density, which should preserve the geometry as well as possible. There we go. That's quite nice. Um, it's not going to be, again, it's not going to be exactly the same. We are changing the triangles. It is changing the geometry slightly, but that looks pretty good. And as you can see, the triangle layout is, it's very different. You can see here, to what it was before. Um, this should completely destroy the watermark. If it, this doesn't, I have no idea what's going on. Um, but I'm going to bet that this has completely removed the watermark. So there you have it, guys. A lot of you suggested in the comments of the previous video that remeshing would destroy the watermark. And yes, it does. This works by basically getting the, uh, the geometry of the object and completely replacing all of the polygons, all of the triangles to maintain basically the same geometry like it is slightly different it's not exactly the same but it has completely new triangles completely new topology and um no watermark therefore so this will destroy the watermark obviously but will, my argument stands will a thief do this no, um, especially if they don't know what they're looking for because these watermarks are hidden until you try to search for them. So one of the other interesting things I do want to test before I wrap this video up is a lot of you suggested putting two watermarks into a model to see what would happen. So let's try that. All right. So remember, guys, this vase is already marked with Maker's Muse. Um, that, that's what I previously watermarked it with. But I'm going to add another watermark to it. Let's try a 3D printing nerd has better hair. Let's go with that. And this is our marked, marked STL file. So 
it didn't throw an error. It didn't say, this is already watermarked, what are you doing? Um, it just downloaded automatically. Um, and let's compare this to the original marked one. So this is the original marked one on this on the left compared to the marked marked one on the right. And um, they're quite similar, but you can see, for example, here, there's nothing but on the marked marked one, there's something. So it's added additional geometry to the geometry it added in the previous watermark. So let's see what happens when we read back the watermark. Will it say um, both of them or will it throw an error? Let's find out. Now this result's really interesting. It seems to have discarded the original watermark and just added the new watermark, 3D Printing Nerd has better hair, um, which he does. And that is kind of bad. Um, it'd be interesting to hear from the Watermark 3D team as to what the protections are for this, because I would have expected it to read back two watermarks, like Maker's Muse and 3D Printing Node has better hair, but it's only read back one, which means it's just destroyed the previous one. Or maybe if I check it again, maybe it'll find the Maker's Muse one. Um, so that's not great, because it means anyone could just watermark something that's already watermarked and destroy the previous watermark. Um, huh. I did not expect that. That's pretty lame, actually. Anyway, guys, um, hope you found this video useful and uh, interesting. I'm going to play around with it a little bit more to see if I can get to the bottom of why it's just destroyed my previous watermark so easily um, and whether a password protects it or not. So there may be a third video if you guys are interested. But thank you so much for your feedback in the previous video. I really do appreciate it and it helps gives me ideas for videos like this. And if you enjoyed this kind of video on Megas Muse, please feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. So till next time guys, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Megas Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.